So I'd like to preface this whole thing off by saying an apology to everybody who listens to this as a podcast format on Spotify, which, by the way, for everybody on YouTube, it's available on Spotify. I uploaded all the other ones pretty much daily for like a week. Didn't stop to think about how I won't do an update for a little bit. This is a little bit more accurate to how my update schedule goes. And if you're upset, I'm sorry. And I promise everything will be back to some form of normality starting after today. Anyway, here's the intro. So today I'm talking about something very personal to everyone, not just me. It's one of those where you're probably going to disagree with parts of what I'm saying, but this is the way art and music and everything goes. I'm talking about the emotions that are brought forth by music at different sounds for myself. Why I listen to certain music for me. Let's start by talking about why I listen to metal and why I listen to different kinds of metal. We'll start with a great song by Die Hex. This is an example of music that can bring forth the feeling of, I call it rage. It's probably not rage. Rage makes it sound really violent. Also, I don't know if I'd say this song brings forth that feeling so much. Either way, it does bring forth some version of overwhelming crushing. Number one, it's one of my favorite songs ever. I love this band. I love the CP, the first CP by Die Hex. Don't get me wrong, Calvin is great, but this one just blew my mind the first time I listened to it. I was actually writing for the website mindthemusicto.com, which is now defunct. 
my good God, when they got a hold of me, I was honored. It was a privilege for me to write this. So I was actually talking to Nat, uh, who is the drummer of this band, who is the drummer of this band, I should say. And he brought up the idea where he talks about he'll never, how he never get used to people being like, you music inspired me or whatever. And I mentioned how you never get used to it. Like, I played in bands for a very long time. And if somebody came up to me and was like, Hey, your album touched me in X. My soul sang. I just found it so complimentary that somebody was actually touched by something I was a part of creating. As I mentioned before, I was never a writer. I was never at the forefront. But I did assist in the way the format went. I'd play the drums, which would dictate the overall feeling, drive, whatever, of the song. To have somebody come up and say, hey, this song, or this album, it made me feel this way, which I thought was great. If somebody came up and said that, I know I did my job right. See, what's really interesting about a song creating the kind of emotional weight that this song did it's more the idea where for this do you know what before i get into it here's an example of a song that made me feel incredibly excited with my anger i guess that could be composed more as rage yeah stubborn believer by kennedy in our world there will be no emotions except fear rage triumph and self-abasement the sex instinct will be eradicated. We shall abolish the orgasm. There will be no loyalty except loyalty to the party. But always there will be the intoxication of power. Always, at every moment, there will be the thrill of victory, the sensation of trampling on an enemy who is helpless. If you want a picture of the future, Imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. Teach me to live without being alive! 
notice pretty quickly the difference between the two songs. Die Hex was a little bit more crushing, a little bit more atmospheric. Because it was a little less frantic, it almost locked you into this feeling of dread, of hopelessness. And that is not a bad thing. Wait till the end and I'll explain it. This one was a little bit more chaotic, a little bit more in lines with bands like The Chariot. I don't know how the guys of Kennedy are going to feel about me comparing them to The Chariot. I love The Chariot. Please, guys, if you hear this, realize that I mean it's the greatest compliment. A little bit more on The Chariot when they get back to The Twin. But anyway, what these songs do for the couple minutes that they play, it gives you a window where you're allowed to feel this kind of emotion. These are things that you wouldn't necessarily be comfortable with just being out in public and be like, I want to punch everybody in the street. But for those two minutes, in your head, at the very least, you're allowed to feel that way. You're allowed to feel that rush that you would get from hitting somebody. And as soon as the song's over, hopefully that feeling's passed. If you're listening to the full EP or full album, hopefully the feeling passes by the time you get to that point. With Kennedy, you definitely get that feeling of just absolute fury. Just an absolute feeling of... What I do find really interesting about that Kennedy album, I don't know if it's intentional all the way through. As I probably mentioned in the past, I don't understand lyrics. And not from a standpoint, I don't hear the voice. I don't... I can't concentrate on the lyrics, particularly. I sit there and get lost in the overall sounds of the rhythm, the melody, the orchestration of the vocals. Especially in a band like Kennedy where they scream, I'd say... 70% of whatever's going on, and whatever they don't scream, it's just so, I get so lost in music before and after, I don't know what he says, but it really comes off, especially because that song opens with um, a sound clip from 1984, the movie gives the illusion to me anyway, where the entire album focuses on some of the moral elements brought on by that book, which is one of my favorite books of all time. Good way to describe the feeling that things like Kennedy, especially Kennedy, and things in that field, the way they dictate your emotions, think about hardcore dancing, which I know is probably fallen out of vogue by this point. Well, I hope so. I was never a fan of hardcore dancing. You get to pretend you're in the kids of hardcore dancing, basically a ninja or a street fighter, and throw fists and spin kick into the air and do all these crazy things. Moshing goes hand in hand with that, you actually get to hit somebody. Sure, it's with your shoulder or your chest, but you still get to act upon the aggression that the song brings forth. As soon as the song's done, you're done throwing kids around. That's a very succinct way of putting it. But music can also do something else for you. Here is There Is No Safe Place by New Design. <laughs>
that is basically the polar opposite of the emotions that I'm talking about. In this case, what it does for me anyway, it brings forth memories of my past. I used to drive around with a really good friend of mine for hours at a time. Hours at a time? I used to drive around for an extended period of time most nights with her. She was my best friend. I actually wrote a short story about her. That's beside the point. I'm not saying that the sound, <clears throat> I'm not saying the sound or the song in particular will bring up these emotions for everybody. That's what's really interesting about music in general. 40 people will listen to a song. Five people will have the same kind of feeling. One person might have something completely different. That is amazing to me. What's really cool about the emo movement, especially in the early 2000s, it wasn't so much you sit there and listen to it being like, well, this is so depressing and so great. No, you'd be listening to it going, I relate to this because it allows me to feel this emotion. It reminds me that I feel this. If you're looking to start a band yourself, it is important to keep in mind the emotional weight that you want your music to portray, what your lyrics portray, the overall emotional theme of the music that you want to create. You can look at the emotional weight and theme of your music either as a song-by-song -song basis, or if you want to do an entire album of it. There are bands like Cursive, uh, New Design, Kennedy, where they seem to go for the full album aspect, both lyrically and musically, where they have one particular sound that they're going off of. And that's, I'm not saying that that's repetitive thing, because Curse of Domestica is one of my favorite albums of all time. You'll be hard pressed to find a more depressing album. I listen to a lot of depressing music, solely because I'm allowed to feel depressed during the two or three minutes that that song plays. It allows me to give that expression. It allows me to feel emotions that I don't feel comfortable showing in public. Continuing on the theme of music and the importance of figuring out your personal theme of music, you have to keep it broad. The more broad you keep your tone and your theme, the more people that you have a chance of actually reaching and touching. For example, if you're writing about a girl named Martha, and all your songs are about your breakup with Martha. Everyone who broke up with Martha can relate. But unfortunately, that's like 2% of the people out there. Anyway, my point is, regardless where you want to focus your emotional weight, whether it be in the music or in the lyrics or in both, your best bet is to keep it mostly personal. So at least you can, if you're faced with somebody coming up to you, like I came up to Nat and was like, your music spoke to me because of X, Y, and Z. You want it to be so a large number of people say, hey, your music spoke to me in this way. But you want to be able to relate to that person and be like, it's great that you felt that. That might not be why you wrote it in particular. God knows my situation is completely different from 99% of people out there. In fact, literally anywhere. I won't get into that. It's my book, which is available at willjhero.com slash books. That's a horrible plug. I can do better. Don't worry about it. I'll get to it one day. I really have rambled on about emotional weight of songs and music for as long as I can. I'm kind of tapped out. So this has been Jay Garden of the Unnamed Podcast. Don't forget to check out my website at wildjarhero.com. Also my Patreon at patreon.com slash bme. That guarantees that I'm able to feed my pets. I love you. Have a good day.